Real quick, I just wanted to show you guys what is not making it to the pickup portion of the video. Um, just a couple of games that uh, I have uplisted, and one that I actually don't have with me anymore that I recently just sold. Sold about a week ago. Figured it wasn't really that important to like show off. Figured I'd just mention it. Um, but it was a sealed copy of Rocksmith. Um, now, I know that the game goes for more when it has its cords or when it's the 2014 edition, um, but even when it was sealed, and for $2.99, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't not take the chance, and uh, I actually ended up selling it for $12.50, which was really nice, um, with free shipping, of course, so I uh, definitely more than doubled my money with that. Um, weird, too, considering that they usually price their Xbox 360 games at $4.00. Uh, such is the case with this next game that I uh, put up for listing, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Uh, no inserts or anything. The disc is a little scratched up, if I can get it out of here, jeez. disc is a little scratched up, but honestly, it doesn't matter. It tested it, I tested it, it works. Um, these things sell overnight. Uh, it doesn't matter what condition it is, some 13-year-old boy will use his mom's credit card to buy it and probably play it for like a couple days before he gets bored um so yeah sold that well i haven't sold it yet but it's up for 13 dollars 50 paid 3.99 for that um up next we have two games um these are both come from the same series we have spyro 1 and we have spyro 2 unfortunately both of these were missing the manual but uh, i only paid a buck 99 each for these so honestly you can't complain this one up is currently for 1750 and this one up is 1450 now while i have this up as just greatest hits no manual I actually have this up as disc only because the copy that i actually own from when i was a kid has just the manual and the game no case this one does have the case, so what I just did was I took out the manual from this one and then I put it in the one I found at Goodwill and then, hold on, <laughs> bam, complete copy of Spyro Ripto's Rage, non-greatest hits version either, which is really nice to have. So I put this up as disc only because I am keeping the manual, I mean the case, I guess, um, since I already own the manual in the game. Uh, so yeah, that's everything I have as of right now. It's, I believe, the 21st of June, so if I find anything else that I'm going to end up putting up to sell, I'll let you guys know, but if not, we'll just move on right to the game room. Alright, so I actually did end up finding two more games that I am going to be selling, both of which were games that I didn't already own, but I don't really see myself playing in the future, uh, so I figured I'd sell them and make a little bit of money back to buy games that I'm actually going to be playing. Um, we have a PlayStation 3 and a Wii game. Uh, first off, I'll be showing off the PlayStation 3 game. Got Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Uh, for some reason, 
all the Harry Potter games on the PlayStation 3 are worth a little bit of money. Um, I think there's like four of them, and all of them are worth at least ten bucks. Uh, this one uh, I have up for $14.50. Uh, they aren't very popular by any means, but um, it will sell at this price. Uh, price charting has it at like $15, so should be a nice little recouper right there. I paid five bucks for that. Uh, and then a game that I've already sold to my surprise. Um, a while back I mentioned that um, some wrestling games on the Wii were worth a little bit of money. Um, and it turns out there's really only one. Uh, and that one was the one I found. I got WWE 2013. Um, I don't know why this is expensive by any means, but I sold this for $15.50 with free shipping. Um, the disc was in pretty immaculate shape. Um, and I paid four dollars for this, so I was really happy to make a little bit of profit on that. Um, I honestly bypassed it when I first saw it at Goodwill, but um, I looked it up luckily, and uh, it's you know worth a decent amount of money. Uh, so yeah, that is I believe it for now. Um, tomorrow's the last official day. Um, it's going to be June 31st tomorrow, so if I find anything else that I'm going to be selling, it'll probably just be in the pickup portion of the video. Uh, but yeah, I will see you guys in the game room. What is up, you guys? Peridot here, back at you. Not in the game room. Not today. Um, normally, I go and set up in the game room, but it honestly takes me a very long time to get set up there. Uh, it usually takes me anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, uh, but in here... Honestly, it takes me a second, and I'm good to go, and uh, I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible for you guys to enjoy. Uh, so anyways, let's just dive right into everything I found this month. Um, first, uh, I started off by finding that copy of Soul Calibur 2 disc only, uh, but I did not end up purchasing it. The reason was because there was a guy who was actually, uh, when I picked it up, he was behind me, and he was like, Oh man, I love that game, you know, I, I've, I've played it so much as a kid and uh you know yada yada um and since i already own the game and i figured i'd just be selling it um i just gave it to him to uh to buy so it wasn't really that big of a deal uh the playstation one games that were there were very junky nothing good uh unfortunately um but uh, the next thing I found was definitely the best thing I found all month. Uh, the rarest PlayStation 1 game I've ever found. Um, but I'm not going to show you guys that just yet. I'm going to wait until the end of the pickups for the month and show you guys the footage and stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, let's move on to the next thing I found at Goodwill. Uh, the first thing uh, was the day I sold that... Uh, like, I found that Seal Rocksmith. Uh, I also found this. You saw me kind of brush it off. Call of Duty Black Ops. Not Black Ops. <laughs> Finest Hour. Uh, really, the only reason why I picked it up is because it's in really mint shape. Disc is perfect. Uh, manual case and everything's really nice. So, picked that up for $3. And then I went to the back of the store and uh, found some really interesting stuff. That Pikachu camera and the Pikachu walkie-talkie. Uh, I actually don't have the camera with me anymore because I actually gave it to a friend who, oddly enough, collects both uh, Pokemon and vintage cameras, so it was kind of like the perfect fit for him, and it was his birthday, so, uh, you know, figured I could just give it to him. Um, it goes for like 30 bucks online, surprisingly. Um, what else I did find, though, was this Pikachu walkie-talkie. Um, there's actually supposed to be a matching Meowth one that goes with it, but I have not been able to find that, so uh, unfortunately, I just have this for now. Um, matching goes for like 15 to 20 bucks online, but uh, I only paid a dollar for this, so you know, it's kind of cool to just own. Um, I actually ended up getting a discount. The guy there that works there, uh, he and I are pretty cool. He gave me a 20% discount, which I thought was really nice. So I don't remember like the exact total that I paid, but I know it was less than what I ended up uh, like originally thought I was going to be paying. Uh, up next, uh, there was that day where there was just a shit ton of PlayStation 2 and Xbox games. Uh, I wasn't there when they were put all out. So I probably missed out on some stuff, but when I went there, it was just nothing but just a sea of sports games and games not even worth it. Um, but I did find this, uh, an Xbox 360 game for $4, uh, the Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls Skyrim. 
Um, this is actually a pretty decent, uh, decently valued game. Uh, the only, like the the original one, only goes for like three or four bucks, but this one goes for anywhere between ten to fifteen dollars, and it's in really mint shape. Uh, the manual, I guess you could call it, is there. The map and all the other inserts and both discs are in here. Paid four bucks for that, so really happy about that. Uh, these next finds I didn't end up filming because I didn't really think that would be worth filming because I got them on half price day. Um, bowling, you guys saw that it was one of the shitty PlayStation 1 games. The only reason why I picked it up was because it had the best case out of all of them. Uh, only paid a dollar for that. And then we have GoldenEye Rogue Agent for a buck fifty. Um, this isn't a very valuable game by any means, and it's not in the best shape, but it is complete. So, it's not that big of a deal. Um... Let me focus real quick on this. Bookman's charged $12 for this back in 2006. Uh, I think that's double what price charting had it at back in 06. So, um, yeah, that's a testament to how crazy booksman, Bookman's can be sometimes. Anyways, uh, the next thing I found were a few PlayStation 2 games. Uh, nothing fantastic, but I'll just show them off real quick. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. Unfortunately, it's not in the best shape. You can see there's a bit of Sharpie on it. Um, it's also not complete, and the disc is in kind of rough shape. And, again, has Sharpie on it. But uh, for $3, you can't really complain. And up next, we have Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. This is like a $10 game, even without the manual, which unfortunately does not have. Disc is in rough shape as well, but... For three dollars, so happy to find that. And then, tie the Tasmanian Tiger. I have the second one, so I'll be excited to play the first one. I don't know if these games are any good or not, but uh, you know they're not worthless. So uh, I figure they might be at least somewhat good, and it's complete and in really nice shape. So, and then finally, uh, definitely the most interesting I've thing I've found in a while. Um, Pac-Man Power Pack. I thought this was really cool. They only have this priced at six dollars, even though it has three games: Pac-Man Two World, um, Pac-Man World Two, Pac-Man Three, and Pac-Man World Rally. Just take it out real quick. All these games are in just fucking mint shape. I don't think any of these have ever been played. Um, like it feels like like you could just feel the gloss on them. Um, this goes for like anywhere between fifteen to twenty dollars. Not as expensive as I thought it'd be, but it's only because these games aren't really worth much on the PlayStation Two. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I also found it interesting that it has the Bandai Namco um, games like uh, label on it. Uh, the one I own has the Namco version, so I guess this was released after the. Bandai and Namco merge. So, yeah, six bucks for that. That's a pretty good deal, considering it's three games. So, two bucks a game. All right, the next day, uh, well, I don't think it was the next day, but um, you saw all those PlayStation 1 games. None of them were worth anything, except for the two Spyro games and the game I'm about to show you. Um, there was actually a game that was worth a little bit that I didn't realize until it was too late. It was Dance Dance Revolution Disney Mix. You don't you hear that and you don't think it's a valuable game, but it's like a fifteen to twenty dollar game. Um, and I looked that up in the back and I saw it and I immediately went to the front to see if it was still there. Literally, already got picked up. So it just goes to show how crazy Queen Creek, uh, the area that I live, is in terms of competitiveness for video games. But um, yeah, I managed to get at least a few things. Um, First up, we have a Xbox game. You didn't see me pick this up. It's an exclusive. Pure Pinball. And no, I did not pick it up just for the women on the front. Um, it's complete and in really nice shape. And surprisingly, it's like a $10 game. Um, it's an Xbox exclusive, too. So can't hurt to have an Xbox exclusive in the collection. Pick that up for 3 bucks. Oddly enough, I only picked this up for $2, which is weird because they have their GameCube games usually at 3 bucks. NBA Street Volume 2, I actually put it in a better case because my friend actually gave me his copy, but the game has like a huge like crack in the middle, like it's in half almost, uh, so it does not work, but at least I could use the case for something. Um, the case had like a bunch of like stickers on the front, I almost like missed it. 
Uh, it is not complete. Uh, the copy that my friend gave me had this precautions booklet, so uh, I, I just at least put that in there. But the disc is in pretty good shape, so it's like a $15 game too. So happy to add that to the collection. And then the only PlayStation 1 game I ended up keeping, not in the best shape, but you take what you can get, Ape Escape. It is Greatest Hits version, and uh, the case is really falling apart. Um, I don't know what the hell this is, like why it's green tinted, but my guess is they just swapped it out like it was, like they destroyed it or something. Um, but the disc is in pretty good shape, so I guess that's really all that matters. And it's Ape Escape, you know, it's a fun game that I haven't been able to have. Um, or add to the collection, so happy to find that for only two dollars. And then when I went in the back, there had a few really good things. Uh, I passed on that like uh, controller port for the PlayStation One because they had it priced a little too high. Uh, you can get those for like ten, twelve dollars online. So uh, I passed on that. Uh, but what I did not pass on was this uh, Namco Museum uh, pack uh, plug and play. Uh, the battery cover is missing. You can tell there's a bit of battery corrosion, but honestly, I don't really care. I think this is the last Namco plug-and-play I need for my collection So, of Namco plug-and-plays. These are really the only ones I care about. Um, and then, unfortunately, something that did not work and I was not able to uh, return because when I gave it to my friend to see if he could fix it, uh, he took off the sticker even though I told him not to. Um, so I was not able to return it. Uh, it's this PS Vita. I should have been suspicious when they had it priced at only $20. Um, unfortunately, when I turn it on, uh, you guys can see in a second. If, uh, when I turn on, basically, the blue screen, or not the blue screen, the blue, this blue power button comes on, but the screen does not come on. I gave it to my friend, he said that this, uh, it's not the system, it's the screen. Um, he said that the LCD screen needs to be fixed, and it's like a $30 fix, so I could put $30 into this, uh, and end up spending like $50 on this and getting a $100 system, but frankly I don't have the time, really, um, I don't really feel like it, to be honest, so I'll probably put it on offer up for 20 bucks and let someone else deal with it. Um, again, I paid $20 for this, so hopefully someone will, you know, buy it and take the risk. All right, now let's move on to um, what else I found. I found this in a Wii system. Um, now, unless you know the people at Goodwill and know that they'll do this, don't try and do this because people will get kind of pissy with you. Um, I saw three Wiis in the back. They were all priced at 25 bucks each, which is crazy for no cords. Um, so, but there was actually a pair of power cords right next to it. So I decided to take all Wiis to the back and use the power cords and plug them in and test and see if they had a game inside. One did not. One had Victorious for, like, the Wii, like Nickelodeon. And then the other had Mario Party 8. I was like, all right, that's cool. Um, it was obviously not complete, disc only. Uh, the disc is in pretty good shape. The Wii was, like, pretty much fucked over. Like, I don't think that thing is going to work. You guys saw how long it took to get out of the system. Uh, but I took it up, and since I know the cashier pretty well... Gave it to him. I was like, hey, uh, I just want the game in the Wii. Can you just uh, charge me for the game? He said, sure. I ended up paying four bucks for it. So really happy about that. <clears throat> All right. Um, up next, uh, this was the day that I found the Harry Potter and uh, WW13. Um, I did not end up buying Wii Sports for some reason. I don't really know why. Don't ask me why. Uh, but I did end up picking a Wii U game up, which is it was crazy for me. Um, the only time I've ever seen a Wii U game was the uh, very broken Super Smash Bros. Brawl last month. Uh, but for five bucks, you know, definitely cannot hurt to put up uh, to pick up a Wii U game for that price. Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Probably never gonna play this, but as everyone knows, uh, people are saying the Wii U is gonna skyrocket in price very soon uh, since they just discontinued it, and people are saying it's gonna be the next uh, GameCube in terms of like, oh, uh, it didn't sell well, and now people are gonna want it after you know it's too late. <clears throat> All right, and then the final group of games that I found, um, I actually found these as he was uh, putting them out. So, um, honestly, I put those games back on the shelf and filmed me picking them up because I actually got them because you know how I'm cool with this guy. I, I came in and he, there were no games out from that day, and I'm like, hey, um, do you know if the guy's brought any games out yet? And he's like, I don't know. Let me go check. And so he went in the back and he brought the games out to me. 
uh, he brought out a, a mini stack, uh, and then I was in line paying for that, and I saw that he came out, like the book guy came out and started restocking, so I figured there might be a few games that uh, he just didn't put out that I, you know, will buy. Uh, so, and there were. So, first up, let's start off with Jack X Combat Racing. Uh, it's not complete, unfortunately, but the only reason why I picked this up is because uh, I believe it's the last Jax game that I need for the PlayStation 2, so happy about that. Up next, we got Hot Wheels World Race. Supposedly, these Hot Wheels games are actually pretty fun. Uh, I remember CJR said it's like a uh, kind of like a F Zero clone, kind of. Um, not in the best shape, but for three bucks, it's like an eight, ten dollar game. And then the best PlayStation 2 game. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, obviously, this is a more expensive game on the Xbox, and it's not complete, but it can still fetch anywhere between $10 to $15 in this condition, uh, even though the disc is really rough as well. But uh, I have not ever found a copy of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Actually, let me rephrase that. I've never found a copy of Star Wars Battlefront 2 that I've bought before. Um, last time I found one was back when I was first hunting, and I was on the Xbox, and I was in mint shape. Uh, but I passed it up because I'm a fucking idiot. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to find that again one day. Uh, and that's it for PlayStation 2 games, but I have two Wii games. Um, this one I actually kind of regret picking up because I thought it was a way more expensive game. Uh, last time I checked it was like worth like 15 bucks, but now it's only like a $10 game. Um, Super Paper Mario. Paid four bucks for this, which is very surprising considering the last time they had a Mario game, they had, like charged like ten dollars for it. Um, but uh, it's not complete, unfortunately. The disc is a little rough, but it's you know decent. Um, I already own this, so I'll try and make a little bit of my money back. But uh, after shipping, I probably won't even make double. So again, I kind of regret picking it up. Probably should have left it for some kid to play. Oh. Uh -oh. But then the next game I ended up picking up, not sure if I'm going to sell or not, uh, Monopoly. Uh, the reason why I'm not sure I'm going to be selling this is because uh, I really like Monopoly as a game. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of the board game. And uh, I actually played the, it says it has the classic and world edition boards. And I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of the world edition version. I used to play the shit out of that game as a kid whenever I went over to a friend's house. Uh, I know, I was a very boring kid. Uh, the disc is fingerprinted to hell, but... It should work. So I'm not sure if I'm going to sell this or keep it. Surprisingly, it's like a $10 game, so. All right. Now it is time for the best game of the month. Uh, definitely the rarest PlayStation 1 game I've ever found. Maybe not the rarest PlayStation, like, rarest game period, but um, it's pretty damn rare, and I'm really happy to show you guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the clip right now. Just at this unassuming antique store up in Phoenix, and, um... Don't expect to find any video games, and, uh, five bucks. Not a bad deal. All right, so you guys saw that clip. Namco Museum Volume 4. Really, really excited to add this to the collection. And it was insane. I found this at an antique store mixed in with the music CDs for five bucks. This is crazy. Um, I actually went up to Prescott, not Phoenix, like the f uh, video said, which is a different uh, part of the town, way, way more up north. Uh, I ended up picking this up. Uh, like all the other uh, antique stores had like set overpriced Sega Genesis games and shit like that, but they had this. It's in really mint shape. Unfortunately, the case makes the disc fall out. I gotta wrap this up because my uh, phone is almost out of memory. Um, but yeah, picked this up for five bucks. It's like a sixty dollar game. So really, really happy to add this. Two, four, and five are the expensive ones. So make sure to pick those up. All right, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Hopefully, I'll be able to find more amazing stuff next month. Um, but until then, I will see you guys then. Peace.